Growing up in Florida, I've always loved fishing the beach, and I've always been curious as to what's cruising that shoreline. So for the past two days, my cameraman Dennis and I try to answer that very question. That's a big one, Dennis. That's not a little one, dude. And the amount of life we saw was pretty incredible. All right, guys, so it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in South Florida. A lot of snowbirds on the beach. Struck out at the first one. We didn't really see much. Dennis flew the drone south, flew the drone north. Pretty little reef, but uh, no fish, no sharks, no nothing, no signs of life. So what we're gonna do is, this is the southern most ends that we're gonna start at. We're in like the Lake Worth area, and we're gonna just continue driving up north, top in the truck and go. Welcome to the land shark mode. Bro. I was telling Dennis, I know I'm gonna love this video. A lot of times when we film offshore, I feel like it could be such a monotonous image. It's just very repetitive. All you guys see is the boat, but I like these little adventure type videos where we kind of show you guys a little bit of what South Florida's like. So this is A1A, this is the road that runs up and down the coast, for those of you guys not familiar. Okay, beach number two, sending the eyes into the sky. Shirts are off, vitamin D is engaged. Beautiful February day, flying the drone, trying to find some fish. Okay, so the area we're in right now, this is the south side of Palm Beach. Big money, old, old money. Um, gorgeous area. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of, it's almost non-existent the amount of beach accesses, but this is a really well-known spot for the black tip. So we're just driving up and down A1A. You know, Dennis made a good point. It's February and it is gorgeous, guys. It's like 72 degrees, perfect temperature. I know a lot of you guys are shoveling snow up north. But hopefully this brings you some joy seeing this crystal clear blue water. Every single beach we've gone to is just packed full of people. We're going to enjoy the sunshine. So we're going to look for another spot here. All right, guys, we got our first visual. Check this out. Dennis has the drone up. If you look on the drone right there, there it is. There's the man in the gray suit. That's what we're looking for. So that's good news, but bad news because there is no public beach access, which means I'm gonna drop them off, probably park somewhere. We got the uh, the bike in the truck right there and I'll have to bike over there, but it's a nice beach with nobody else on it except some sharks. We're gonna be on them. All right, boys and girls, just biked about four miles from the nearest public parking and we made it to the beach. I'm going down the trail right now. Here we are, the promised lands, where we saw the sharks on the drone. Dennis and uh, Yames are already on the beach. When we put the drone up in the air earlier, we saw the sharks at this very beach. But in between the time that we did the whole car debacle and biked here, there's no sharks. We're kind of just sitting around waiting, and not only are there no sharks, I forgot the bait in the truck, so I either have to go on bike, back to the truck, which is gonna be like another hour ordeal, or we're gonna wait for our buddy Ricky to come and bring him. But it's still a little bit low tide, and I don't think the sharks like it when the water's super, super low. They don't come in into the trough. So we're kind of just waiting. But I'll tell you what, that bike ride, I worked up an appetite. So time for a little lunch break, and Brooke and I have actually been eating some killer meals from this company called Cook Unity, which I brought with us on the beach for Dennis and I to enjoy. Normally you heat these meals up, but obviously we're on the beach, so I can't heat it up. These meals have been absolutely amazing. Brooke and I have been enjoying them. 
all week long. Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared meals right to your door weekly. Chefs you see on TV or in five star kitchens are the chefs that make your Cook Unity meals. These include Food Network alums, James Beard Award winners, and acclaimed restaurateurs. Balancing flavor and nutrition in their creations, their chefs make it easy and enjoyable for you to eat well. I love that they use regional micro kitchens, not mass produced in warehouse production facilities. Their chefs use humanely raised meat, organic ingredients, and fresh seasonal products to maximize flavor and nutrition in every bite. Just this week, we've gotten to enjoy some amazing meals like Cuban pork, Middle Eastern braised beef, hanger steak, and lemon rosemary chicken. I love the variety of meals Cook Unity offers and how convenient they are to prepare. Meals are chilled and sent fresh, not frozen, so that they're ready to heat and eat when you are. One of my favorite meals was the Cuban pork by Chef Michelle Bernstein out of Miami, who was actually a James Beard Foundation Award winner. My buddy James joined us at the beach. He's an actual chef in South Florida, a really good one at that. And he was reading up on the label. He actually knows this chef, Michelle Bernstein. Victor gave me a bite earlier too. Usually meals like this aren't seasoned well. This one is seasoned very well and I would definitely order these. It was delicious, no BS. You guys know we take our food very seriously on this channel, and it's just nice to be able to incorporate some new recipes throughout the week. So if you guys want to try out Cook Unity, go to cookunity.com slash Landshark50, or click the link in the description box below and use code Landshark50 to get 50% off your first order. Big thank you once again to Cook Unity for sponsoring today's video. All right, so yesterday you guys saw us leave off in uh, the Palm Beach area. It is the next morning. Dennis has the drone in the air and we are on the hunt. We're starting a little bit north today of where we started yesterday because we checked all the beaches down south with no luck and hopefully today we're gonna work our way north. We got reports of big schools of black tips up north. On the hunt, boys and girls, we've checked two beaches. Dennis found some, filmed some really epic stuff. There was this like one spot where we saw maybe 10 or 12 sharks just congregating, which is so funny to see because sharks you never think of of just like these little puppies in a playpen, which I would make an analogy. They were just like sitting in this little playpen in the beach, right there on the sand. You could see the waves crashing over them. I don't know what they were doing, but we are looking for the big school of black tips. So the reason we haven't fished is this time of year, when you strike gold, you strike gold. And I'm talking about thousands of sharks. And that's what I want to film for you guys. And that's what we want to fish. Try to get them on the pop or get some really cool eats. So we're headed north to an area known as Stewart, and we'll see if we see him there. If not, we'll work our way south, but that's why we started really early today, to try to put a good story together. Chef Games is in the back. And that's all I got. Shoot! I got one undersized red dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see a lot of sharks? The guy down there to the right, he's killing them. Right now? No. Oh. So that was a good report. Um, we've been filming all day, getting some. Dennis has been killing it with the drone. Film manta rays. We film sea turtles. We film sharks. We film cobia. Finally decided to fish. We came up to this beach right here and talked to a bunch of the pompano fishermen. And whenever there's a good report of pompano, there's always sharks on them. So we didn't find like the big school that I wanted to show you guys, but you know. After filming for two days and not soaking a bait, it's time we soak a bait and see what happens, you know? How many miles do you think we covered? Woo! Shoot, at least 40, 50 miles of, of beach, just going from beach access to beach access. But I had a lot of fun. It's really cool to be able to see things from the drone. And, you know, you see all these people at the beach paddle boarding and surfing and just enjoying the water. And it's like, they have no idea what is just 20 feet outside of them just the coexistence of humans and nature it's just like you know the meeting point of the beach it's just cool to think about so we're gonna get baits out here we got some cut bait and actually one of the beaches that we were at earlier today games caught a little mackerel for bait so there's no better bait to use even for sharks because people think that sharks aren't picky, but I can tell you right now, they can be very picky than a fresh bait. Whatever they're eating in the area is the best thing to use. So you know what? We're gonna be able to get three baits off of this guy. Nice little tail chunk like that. Don't need it to be very big. Fresh mackerel. I got about a foot and a half of American fishing wire. Must add circle hook. Not a very big hook either. You don't need a huge hook for sharks. I'm gonna hook them right there 
in the tail, okay? Just like so. And then I have two snap swivels, one to my wire rig and one for the weight. Um, so it, it doesn't slide up the line, so it's just nice and secure right there. And then we got some heavy mono leader, so that way when we go to leader them, it's really nice on the hands to be able to grab them, because when they're in the trough like that, you want something to pull on rather than light line. Okay, we got the 12 foot surf rod. We're gonna lug it out there. Our mate's right there just past the sandbar. This beach, you can see the waves aren't breaking, so it's really deep, which I like. I like deep beaches for sharks because I don't think they like to be in shallow water. Now we wait. So while Victor's soaking that bait right there, a fun way to get these spinners, some of these big poppers and topwaters, it's super, super cool because you see this black void swimming behind your lure popping, and all of a sudden you'll just see this big shark just jump out of the water and do spins, and I'll do all kinds of crazy maneuvers. Charging the beach. I had a, I put the mackerel head on there thinking that I would be able to get away from the bluefish, but that's not the case. But he's gonna be. We got big for a good shark bait. Look at these teeth. Things will destroy good job, your Seth. This thing Great will destroy job. your fingers. So we left the beach that we were at earlier. Water was really murky and it started to get really windy and we just weren't seeing the black tip didn't get any bites. So we came back down south to where we saw the sharks really good. And as soon as we got here, Dennis put the drone up, immediately started seeing sharks really close to shore. So James and I both just cast out a bait. I'm gonna try to get one on the popper. That has been a goal of mine. I've never caught a black tip on a popper from the beach. So if there's a time and place to do it, it's today. So we're gonna try to give it our all and. I'm really confident because the sun's going down and I feel like now is when the sharks are gonna come in shallow and feed. So, Dennis had the drone up in the air and I walked down the beach because he's finding the sharks from the drone. And I saw him going up and down with the drone, so I'm guessing that's where the shark was and I kept casting underneath it. He said he got some good video of them coming up, investigating the popper, but he said that one of the pops attracted them, the other kind of spooked them. So I still think there's a little bit too much light. It's around four o'clock, but as that sun sets and it just gets darker and darker and darker, I think they'll get more and more comfortable and really aggressive. Still soaking those two baits, but I really do think it's like a, a dinner bell. As soon as you get that low light conditions, they come in from outside of the reef and past the sandbar and come in real shallow to feed. That's our bite right there. We just got picked up again, put into free spool, seeing if he's gonna come back. My line's super slack. Like he's charging the beach where I got cut off. Oh, there he is, there he is. Come on, come back. Eat that bait, eat that bait. He's running with it. He's got it. Dropped it again. Got it again. Come on. We're not losing you this time. We got him. There it is, jumping like crazy. It, oh, oh, oh. Woo! That's a big one, Dennis. That's not a little one, dude. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Right. The surfers are. The surfers are freaking out. Oh gosh, he's by the buoy. Yeah, there's a buoy right there. I believe he's under the water, yeah. Oh, no, the buoy. Yeah, 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 thing. yeah. I think he's inside the buoy, though. Yeah. So there's so. a... He there's ready me, he ready me to turn to go down the buoy. Yeah. There's a buoy out there, guys, so I had to turn him before he got to the buoy. All right, awesome. Victor, put one on the... 
I think this is a big black tip. It jumped and it was not small. They are such a sick animal. I love when they jump like that. So there's two kinds of uh, sh uh, sharks that look like black tips on the beach, black tips and spinners. 90% of the ones that we see on the beach are black tips. And a lot of people don't know, they think that it's spinner sharks that jump, but the black tips will jump too. Put on quite a show. There's three guys surfing out there. And uh, the black tip was jumping right next to the surfers. So we tried with poppers and top waters all day. I got my boy Ricky down there, he's popping too, but they wanted the bait today. They did not want any of the top water action besides those two we had come up on the drone, but they didn't commit. So for a land-based fisherman, you know, I grew up fishing a lot of piers, beaches, jetties, not having access to a boat. And you guys hear us complain about sharks when we're on a boat and offshore and they're eating your catch. But for the land-based guy, this is one of the most exciting things you can do. And it's cheap. You come out here with some chunk bait, cast off the beach, you know, it's easily accessible to everyone. And it's like the best big game fishing you can do as a land-based fisherman in Florida. Thing's chunky, dude. It has a fat one. It's full grown. Really fat. Look at them hop up. There it is. That is a full grown black tip right there. Angry, angry shark. Look at that. Look at those chompers right there. Beautiful, beautiful animal. We got Mr. Ricky from New Jersey on the net or on the leader job. Thank That's you. Right. Fresh out the water. <laughs> Fresh out. This guy's too much. The first time I ever did a black tip catch and cook was with Ricky. Came over really? to the house. We had a good black tip barbecue. Teriyaki was delicious. Yeah. We're doing so shark sn schnitzel this time. Ooh. Yeah. You coming? Some schnitzel. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Yeah. So, guys, we got it done. Black tip is on the beach. That is a full grown black tip. They don't make them much bigger than that. That is a girthy one. Normally you catch them, they're like 30, 40 pounds. That thing is every bit of 60. Um, just real dense animal. You guys see they put up a really good fight. And we are going to harvest this shark. You are 100% allowed to do so in the state of Florida. One black tip shark per person per day for a licensed Florida fisherman like myself. There are lots of these sharks. Florida does a really good job of managing our shark population, despite what you hear around the world. Our shark population in Florida, very well managed. And that's why we're able to consume fish like this. Anytime you catch a shark, they're really good to eat, but you have to make sure you dispatch them. So what I'm gonna do is, what you guys aren't gonna see, I'm gonna cut the head off, I'm gonna bleed it, and I'm gonna gut it. Because sharks excrete ammonia and a bunch of other nasty stuff through their skin. So we gotta get all that out of them, kill him so that way he doesn't suffer. And we're gonna get the core, put it on ice, and flay him up. That's all there is to it. All right guys, it's the next day and I had the black tip shark core. This is what we would call the core sitting in the cooler overnight. Got it nice and cold. Big thick animal, so you want that, uh, that meat in the center to really relax, you know? Any wild game or any protein, you let it sit on ice, that meat relaxes and it, it doesn't get so tense. It loosens up. Um, you guys see that the gut cavity is removed, the fins are removed, the head's removed, the guts and everything, and that's what we did. I just don't show it on video because I feel like there's not, it's gonna do more harm than good. It's gonna turn a lot of people away, and it's just, I think, something that I enjoy watching, but a lot of other people won't, and I don't wanna get demonetized. So I've filleted 
few sharks in my day now, and the best way I've found to fillet them is from the inside out. Shark skin is like sandpaper. You will cut yourself so easily. If you listen to this, it is legit like, like sandpaper that you would get at Home Depot or Lowe's. So it dulls your knife when you fillet it from that side. So now that we got our core, I'm gonna fillet it from the inside out. Um, sharks don't actually have bone, like a, you know, a proper skeleton. They have cartilage. So it's kind of hard to feel where exactly you should be cutting. Because like a fish, a normal fish, you know, has a flat skeleton. Sharks, it's almost like a, a triangle that comes up like this, which you guys will see once we fillet it. And there's no like distinct bones. It's very soft cartilage, which is kind of crazy because for such a rugged animal, you would think that everything about them is rugged, but they got a pretty soft skeletal system. And I'm just going where I would think that the cartilage is. Kind of right along the center of the fish. So if you see right here, this is his spinal cord. You see how easy it was to flay it up from the inside out. But now to get through the skin, I'm using a, uh, a knife called the Dextreme. It is a dual edge knife. So you got a tiger edge actually, it's serrated. So it's perfect for things like this with sharp skin, or bony fish like snapper grouper. So I'm gonna use the back side of the blade to get through that hard skin. You see how he easily literally went through there like butter. And that's because of that serrated side. It just, it's really good for rough exteriors. Like I'll show you guys again. So using the back side of the blade, this one's a little bit tougher. Saw right through it, right? Now, my normal side of the blade is not getting dull. So like I was saying, the shark skeleton is not really flat. It's kind of more comes up like a triangle, which you guys can see right there. It's kind of raised. This is where that center would be. So you can't really go flat about it. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna go from the inside out once again. Let's see if we could get Just removing that cartilage. By no means am I a professional. I only harvest, I'd say about two or three sharks a year, so I don't get as much practice as I do with normal fish. You guys see, we just removed that cartilage, once again, using that back side of the knife. Great all around knife to have. And I'll have it linked below for you guys. This is an eight inch Dextreme stiff blade, and you can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark linked below. So now what we're gonna do with our shark is I'm gonna break it down into sections. Instead of trying to skin this in one long section, we're gonna kinda stake it out into multiple pieces. Okay, so let's go about this big. And I'm gonna skin it from the inside out. So get my knife flat with the skin. Just like that, look. See, no skin on the final product. You know what, we might be able to skin this the whole length. And I'm gonna leave a little layer of meat on this black tip. Because that is where the bloodline is. Sharks, unlike fish, have a very thick, thick bloodline. And you don't want that in your final products. Shark is definitely something novel that I think most people in their lifetimes have probably never eaten. I think it's really unique and to be able to say that you can consume a wild shark in Florida. But if you guys look, they're very firm. Uh, the texture is really firm. They don't smell at all. If you've ever had smelly shark, I guarantee you it was not harvested and prepared properly. Like I said, you gotta gut these things and bleed them immediately, put them on ice. You treat them like any other wild protein. You take care of it, you don't treat it like a trash fish, and it's gonna shine on the dinner table. And that's exactly what this shark does. This is not the first or second, it's the third time we've eaten black tip, and I guarantee you it's gonna be a hit with the family. So, excited to cook up some shark schnitzel for you guys. I'll see you there. Schnitzel, to my knowledge, Basically, it's a fried cutlet of veal, chicken. Um, yeah, that's all a schnitzel is. Pork, 
but we're gonna make it with shark today. Now, in the past, I've experienced two things with shark. They're either really tender or they can be on the tough side. So to err on the side of caution, if you're ever gonna cook shark and you're worried about overcooking it or it being tough, the thinner you cut it, the, the less likely you're gonna have a really chewy piece. Because if you think about it, if you're gonna have like a one inch thick steak of shark and it's chewy, not so good. But if you cut them nice and thin like I did right here, which I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys, even if it's chewy, it's gonna be enjoyable to eat because it's gonna have some bite, like a, you know, like a pork chop would. Pork chops are not the most tender thing in the world either. So what I did with all the shark is, you guys see that that bloodline is still pretty thick. So I've been shaving away the pieces of bloodline. That's not waste, I'm gonna give that to my buddy Frankie for fish dip, he actually makes fish dip out of shark. And so what I did is, I take our sections of shark, I take my knife and I see how thin I want it and then I just go kind of along the length of my fish. And I've just been making these nice long sections like this. So you see they're relatively thin and it looks like a big veal cutlet or something. Real pretty, real pretty meat to work with. So now, super simple batter. We're gonna go into a little flour dredge. And I didn't season it because um, I'm using some seasoned breadcrumbs and we're also gonna salt it at the end. So just a little flour into the egg wash. How many people you think are making shark schnitzel in the state of Florida right now. Not just the state of Florida, in the entire country. I'd say the numbers are pretty low. Um, and then this is a mixture of panko and Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. Because if you use straight panko, they get really crispy. They're the best for crispiness, but they don't have any flavor. Italian breadcrumbs are, you know, you got little bits of parsley in there and onion powder, garlic powder, so it's already a little seasoned, so it just gives it a little more flavor. That's why I like to combine the two. That way you get the crunch and you get the flavor at the same time. And you gotta make sure you flip these babies over four times. I see people and they do it once, twice, uh-uh. You gotta make sure you get, look at that. You see that coating? We don't mess around with the coating in this house. Cooking outside so we don't stink up the house. Avocado oil going into the pan. We're gonna shallow fry this, so we're not gonna deep fry it. You know, we're just basically coating the bottom of the pan. Oil's nice and hot, into the grease we go. Okay, so let's check them. You can see that some of the edges are already getting a little nice and brown. These shouldn't take long because they're relatively thin. Basically just trying to get that uh, breadcrumb crispy. A few of the pieces like this one right here, I can see it's kind of curling, and I can see that that protein is really tightening, so I don't know if maybe it's just this, this section of shark that's a little bit tougher, but some of them are staying nice and flat, and the meat is relaxed, but some of them are kind of curling. So we're gonna start to take the ones that are done off onto the wire rack right here. Wire rack, great way to make sure that your, anything you fry, stays um, crispy and doesn't get soggy because that bottom of that fish or whatever you're cooking can breathe and it's not getting soggy in its own juices. I think they look pretty dang good. They look tasty to me. Just, just Let's get this one a little crispier. This one a little crispier. And then as soon as they come off of the oil, salt them right away. That salt's gonna stick. Look at the color on this one. The first ones were a little bit uneven. I overcrowded the pan, but that is the perfect color right there. So we're gonna finish up this last batch. Gotta work on some mashed potatoes and salad in the kitchen. Okay, so little garlic scallion mashed potatoes. We got a whole head of garlic going in there. Some scallion one and a half sticks of butter. I'm gonna put a little bit of sour cream in there as well. I like the flavor of sour cream on my mashed potatoes. And then we're basically just gonna keep blending it with milk until we get the desired consistency. So I'll start with about that one. Now the fun part. 
I'm gonna do a little spring mix salad. I got some beautiful red grapes as well as some grape tomatoes cut in half. Gonna give them a nice amount of olive oil, some balsamic glaze, good pepper, salt, fresh lemon juice. I also added some candied, I think those are pecans, some candied pecans, spring mix salad. You might need some. Look at these black tip sharks. They look good. Nice yeah. schnitzels. They look good. They do look like schnitzels, don't they? Well, that's what I made it for. Yeah? It's a schnitzel, yeah. So uh, try to say shark schnitzel real shark, fast. Shark schnitzel. Now oh, you got it. <laughs> I was choking up on video yesterday trying to say it. Okay, guys, it's ready. So we got our garlic scallion mashed potatoes. We got our shark schnitzel and then our spring mix salad. First in line always. I'm, I'm first in line, man, because I see that big shark schnitzel there. It's got my name on it right here. Look, nothing to grab it with, so I'm just grab it with my hand. <laughs> Where's the tongue? <laughs> I don't. I, I left the knife hanging. Here, use this. Oh my gosh, this looks good, man. This does look good. Doesn't it? It feels like it's good for you too. I could probably man handle through it just to taste it. Let's see. Shark schnitzel. Thank you. Super good. Damn. Super good. And it's also, you don't, like schnitzel is a different way that we don't often have. And shark turned out really, really well to cook this way. I'd, I'd say uh, catch yourself a black tip and make some schnitzel if you can. I'm telling you, um, I go to a German restaurant and have schnitzel. This looks like schnitzel, and the texture is kind of like a pork schnitzel. It's way better than I thought it was gonna be. Black tip shark, I thought it was gonna be whatever, but it's good. So good. Isn't it? Yeah, it's Don't it remind you of that schnitzel at that it, German restaurant? Yeah. Maybe better. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay guys, first bite for me. Chicken fried. Um, Brian was able to cut his with a fork. Mine's a little bit tougher, so I used a knife. It's damn good. The beauty of a lot of fish, people like the flake. But when you eat fish with so much flake, you get used to that. But this is just, I would say, refreshing. It's different, you know, it's like you're it really is like you're eating a pork chop of the sea or like a really tender veal. I would say it's very similar in texture to something like a veal schnitzel. I really like it. It's incredible. You know, just to think something fried, but shark fried, I feel like this is like the best way to eat it. It is incredible. Delicious. I've had shark here. I don't know how many times, but this is definitely the best way I've had shark here. Shark schnitzel, who would have thought? Um, you can always count on Victor to come up with something unique uh, as far as recipes go, and this is definitely one of those. Um, never would have expected it. Um, yeah, shark schnitzel, who knew? It's amazing. Thank you, brother. I'm loving it too, the crunch, the thinness of it. It's Perfect. Uh, great mashed potatoes, nice and creamy. Uh, I like the nuts in your salad. Uh, awesome meal. Good job. Two thumbs up. All right, so I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, this was actually Ames' idea, who you guys saw on the beach. He's a chef, and we've made sharks so many times, but schnitzel might be the way to go for a majority of these species. Cut real thin like that, you get that nice bite. Really, really loved it. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.